Welcome to the Ask a Matchmaker Hotline. I'm your host, Matchmaker Maria. And this week's post Thanksgiving Hotline has our special guest, Matchmaker Louis Felix, back for another round of answering your dating and relationship questions. Louis, welcome back to the Ask a Matchmaker podcast. Hi, Maria. You sound so sexy when you're congested. You know, that's what Chrisula says too. the other matchmaker on staff. She's like, you've got Phoebe. You know what? Phoebe. It's really funny. What's Phoebe? You know, like Phoebe from Friends, when she's like oh, sick Phoebe. in that one episode. Oh, okay. yeah, Phoebe. Yeah. How many Phoebes do you know? Well, I thought you were saying like Phoebe. Like, I don't know. I have teenage kids and they make stuff up all the time. So I didn't, I thought that was something new. I didn't know what it was. Anyway. No, no. Um, I don't like being sick. I don't like being congested at all. Uh, not my favorite thing. I am sure I have some germ my children have given me. And uh, well, I'm, you know, what's funny though. I did have a uh, three client meetings today. That's amazing. And were, were they all, they're all men? Male they were all men. I, I know who all they good are. looking. Yeah. I know. I know exactly who they are and they are all good looking men. Yes. Right. They're all yeah. good looking and, and they were all tall. Successful. They're all over yeah. six feet, all six feet. successful. Yep. Oh my God. Um, and they're all going to become clients, I think. So I'm really excited. Uh, but anyway, so all three men, I would pause the sales call to blow my nose. I would say, I have to mute you for a second so I can go and blow no. my nose. Very sexy. They were very understanding. And I feel like that's a win for them too. Like just personality wise. Yeah. I, I wish people, well, I'm glad people don't know what we do when we push mute on our calls, because uh, <laughs> if I push mute on this, on this zoom, then on this podcast and you know, I'm, I'm probably doing something I shouldn't be doing. Oh, Louie. Um, well, uh, I'm happy to be speaking to you on zoom, uh, because I feel like I just saw you last week because I did. <laughs> right. We did. Yeah. We were in Cancun. Uh, did you like Cancun? Man, that was incredible. Um, Cancun was fun, but I think the uh, conference that we attended was, was truly spectacular. You did like an incredible job. You and the organizers, uh, Michelle and Lori, um, really amazing. Yeah, so for those great. who don't know, uh, last week, uh, I hosted with my co-hosts, uh, Michelle and Lori, the Matchmakers Alliance conference, which uh, the Matchmakers Alliance is uh, the trade association for professional matchmakers who collaborate. We have over 400 members. It's great. So if you're wondering about behind the scenes of matchmaking, uh, you should know that collaborative matchmakers talk to each other. So if you have a client or if I have a client and I'm wondering, Hey, maybe you have a match in your database. Like I shouldn't penalize my own client because one woman happened to sign up, uh, on a different database, uh, you know, instead of mine that one night. Yeah. So, you know, we all collaborate with each other or also sometimes, I mean, I think Louis does this a lot, you know, we'll have phone calls of people that might not be a good fit for us, you know, and of course right. your first match has to be with your matchmaker. So, yep. you know, Louis has those conversations and then he sends them to the right matchmaker and they are always right. part of the matchmakers Alliance. That's who we trust. So, Yeah. Yeah, I think that I think you know it's really important for people to know that when you schedule a call with me, it's not to sell you something. I have a vested interest in doing what's best for you. So we're probably not always going to be the best fit for you. We I might send you to a different company, or I'll give you an incredible strategy to kind of change the direction, um, you know, from what you've been doing or what you're used to doing. And it's been extremely life changing for most of the people that I speak with. I get emails. I get actually, I get people writing reviews at, about how amazing um, it was because you know you, you should schedule a call. So if you get single messages, for a while, I love that yeah. we've we've completely pivoted into like schedule a call with Louie. But you know what? This is my podcast, and uh, I've got a business to run. And you need a dating strategy <laughs> plan post Thanksgiving. So we're here to provide that, but we're also here to provide <laughs> answering your dating and relationship questions. <laughs> okay. So we had fun in Cancun. I just want you to know, Louie, um, I gained six pounds while I was in Mexico. What? I know. And wow. you know what I realized what it was? Cause I ate pretty well calorie wise. Yeah. Cause I track my food, but I mm -hmm. never track the pina coladas. Right. I didn't and see you eat. Like I, I know, really I, legitimately, you did not eat. Uh, yeah, I, I felt like I was never eating. 
uh, cause I frankly yeah. ne- didn't have that much time as the organizer. Um, uh, but also I drank, a- I don't ever drink. I drank my weight in pina coladas and I don't think I had a single cup of water while I was in right. Mexico. And it's not because I was in Mexico. It was just like, well, between the choice of a pina colada and water, I'm going right. to choose a pina colada. But it was also all inclusive. So like you could just keep ordering them and, and then you tip the waiter and then he just kept bringing them. That's what happened. Our waiter, yeah. he named himself Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> he did. That's true. And you tipped him $20 and I did. he kept, he would come back with like three pina coladas each. Yeah. Each. So that's all I was just yeah. drinking. And yeah. it's funny after I stopped drinking, I've lost four pounds since last Monday. Okay. That's good. So oh, you look great. I mean, Thank you. It's also because I'm, I think I'm sick. <laughs> oh, well. So I look good. I sound great. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's like exciting times. Another thing that happened this past week is that you had a birthday. Oh God. We don't want to publicly announce that. What? It's a milestone yeah, birthday. It was a big year. Yeah. Well, tell me the year. thing that you said that made me like ponder and have an existential crisis. What was the thing you said <laughs> what about? <did> I say? <laughs> You said something about how, like, you don't know what I'm talking about. I think I do. So, yeah, I don't even know why I was giving advice. Like, who am I to give advice when it comes to life for each person's life? Right. So um, I don't know. Listen, I turned 50 this this past week. So I'll just say it. I'm 50. I'm 50. Um, I wish I had a sound effects board because then people would be clapping, you know. And Yeah, oh, that'd be that'd be really great. I, I would feel very honored. But um you know, I don't know. I guess you reflect on your life as you get, as you age. And, you know, I don't know. The moment just felt right. I had Anna Maria there. Who's like 21. How old is she? 20, 26. Oh, she's 20. She looks like she's 18. Right. So 26 year old, you're there. You're all young. I'm old now. I feel like I'm old anyway. Um, but, you know, I came to the conclusion that, you know, when it comes to life, we, you know, we have kids and my kids are both in college now. And so you wake up one morning and you have a kid and then you wake up one morning and they're graduating high school. And I don't think that I ever stopped to realize how many years went by for that process to complete. Uh, but ultimately what I realized, I came to the realization that you really have to like appreciate every single moment of every single day and um, just really live in the moment because time gets the best of you and your focus is on your children you know, or your job or, you know, you're dating and you're, you know, swiping. So, I mean, of course we're going to keep doing those things, but I think you need to just really appreciate every moment of every day just to get the most out of life. Um, I don't know. I may have said it much more eloquently when I talked to you about it, but yeah. I like it. I I like it. It made me think about like, I think what you were just kind of preaching over again, pina coladas on the beach, uh, on our <laughs> I was drunk. conference. Yeah, I was we were, drunk. we were pretty drunk. Uh, yeah. and we don't even get drunk. I think that's what was funny about it. Yeah. No, uh, I was never drunk. but you know, you were saying stuff like, you know, you were saying about, you know, being grateful and appreciative and just kind of not necessarily making each day count. Cause that sounds really exhausting, but like look around even when it's right. busy. And I felt like, you know what? Um, I definitely need to pause sometimes and look around and just be really appreciative of what's happening. And I, and I've been thinking about that ever since you said that, like, just, just take it all in, be present. That's what you were saying to be present. And I, you know, I, I've been making a concentrated effort on being a present daughter, uh, spouse, uh, parent, friend, matchmaker. (laughs) And, uh, I really appreciate that. So Louie, again, happy birthday. I'm so Thank happy you. that you're, uh, that you're, you know, who you are. Uh, also it's, you know, we're recording this on the eve of Thanksgiving and I just want to say, I'm super grateful for you. Oh, I'm grateful and thankful for you as well. Yeah. I think Thanks. You have an awesome time at, at, with what we do. And I'm also really grateful of the Ask a Matchmaker community and I am ready to take on questions. Are you ready, Louie, to take on questions? Absolutely. Let's get going. I can't wait to hear your questions. Awesome. Okay. Welcome to the Ask a Matchmaker Hotline. How can we help you? Hi, Maria. Hi, Louie. Well, my issue is that I've been dating a guy exclusively for about six months now, and we have been intimate, obviously. We see each other a lot. Um, But all of a sudden, about a month ago, he stopped expressing interest in me um, to the point where he stopped actually having sex with me. 
And he's basically started to almost ignore me. Um, now it's difficult when I say ignore me, it's like we're still seeing each other consistently. So he's still there physically, mm -hmm. but he's on his phone or he's on his laptop. Um, I have tried to talk to him about it because I do feel invested in the relationship, um, but he just makes up excuses like he's really stressed at work. Um, and then when I try to initiate sex or anything like that, he just comes up with some excuse like he has to work early the next day. So my question is, do you think it's possible that he is cheating on me? Um, yes. Well, I, just, I, not, I can see why you would think that. Yeah, that was sure. not the question I was expecting. OK, what's the <laughs> right. next question? Like my, my face just like contorted. To, is that the yeah. right word? Like, I was like, what? OK. And then what's the next question? And. Well, really, it's the second part of that question. It's just, do you think that's why he's lost interest in me? Because he might have somebody else. Huh. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I mean, how? I mean, has 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 the pattern changed at all with with how often you see each other? Um, so that's the first thing I think about. So when someone's cheating, like maybe there's like, oh, I'm going to go to my friend's house and or I'm going to go to the gym after work or you know, does he take showers like a lot? Oh, that's a good one. Oh my gosh, he takes so many showers. Really? Oh, wait, I was just kidding. Hold up a second. When you're um, having dinner, uh, is his phone up or down? So his phone's there. So we sit across from the table, um, across from each other, and he's got his phone on him. If I was to come and like bring him a drink or something like that, then yeah, the phone goes down. I mean, he could be on Grinder. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Well, yes, possibly, possibly he could. Um, no, consistency has pretty much remained the same. The only thing that's different is, yes, he's getting late. Uh, he's getting back um, later from work than usual. We don't live together. Um, so we see each other about four times a week. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot. Does that's he get lot, into yeah. a mood that's like unexpected to you sometimes? Or like, wait, where is this coming from? Why are you in a bad mood? Or why are you so you know, like whatever. Well, so he is a construction worker, which is okay. obviously um, very laborious and physically draining. Sure. Um, but when he gets home, he's not really thinking about work. So I don't understand why he's saying that it's stressing him out because when we first met, he said it's the easiest job he's ever had. And now his right. excuse is that work stressing him out. And yeah, so he is acting a little bit off. He's acting a little bit strange. And um, I don't know, he's just changing all the, contradicting himself in so many ways. Okay. Um, I have more <laughs> follow-up questions. Not so much about what he's saying, but I want to learn more about your relationship for a second. Okay. So you are an exclusive relationship for six months. Is he your boyfriend? Yes. Okay. Uh, how far into the relationship did the change, the cadence, did it change? So we've been together exclusively for the six months. We were seeing each other the two months prior. So that's a total of eight months. So it was about a month ago. So yeah, seven, seven months in. Mm. Okay. Um, and just um, immediately these changes just started happening. It wasn't gradual or maybe it was gradual and you didn't notice. Maybe it was gradual because I still was in like that lust stage. I was so excited seeing him, like I got the butterflies and then all of a sudden, yeah, I, maybe I did just notice it, but maybe it was more gradual. I don't, I'm so trying. From a, okay, before we figure out if he's cheating on you, I just want to say <laughs> that from a physiological perspective, mm -hmm. uh, there is I know I've said this in, I'm sure previous episodes, I'm sure I've said this on other podcasts, uh, but you know, it, it bears repeating, okay. That the English language is insanely limited when it comes to expressing love. There's one word for all of it. And me, me being that I'm Greek and I'm sure other languages might have the same thing. Greek people have five words for love and like thousands of expressions for love. Right. Uh, so what usually happens between month four I mean, month one, excuse me, like upon first meeting someone and between let's say month four and seven is that you are in the arrow stage. So the first six months are always the arrow stage. Arrows is the lust stage, but you, of course you don't turn to someone and say, I lust you in English. That's ridiculous. Okay. In Greek, <laughs> you would say, 
serotevome, right? So you're telling people like, I'm in lust for you, right? There's a word for this. So in Greek, you would say, okay, so that usually happens in the beginning stage of love. And then what would happen is at some point that lust, that eros, that is going to plateau. It has to plateau, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Anyone telling you that they're still in the lust stage three years in, they're lying <laughs> to you. Uh, that's just not something that is going to happen because eventually people plateau. And if, and if anyone here is in a relationship, who's like, um, you know, we used to have sex like bunnies, like three times a day or two times a day, uh, six days a week and good for you. Um, but then like six months in, it's like maybe twice a week. That is because right. Eros has plateaued and that's okay. That is a normal physical reaction. Okay. But what's supposed yeah. to happen after that is the next stage of love, which is a copy, um, uh, which is, um, like love, like traditional love. And, uh, I love you. Sarapao, right. In, in Greek. And, and here that is a choice, right? So when you meet someone, you start dating them, that arrow stage, that's usually out of our control, right? Dopamine has taken over. Oxytocin has taken over. There's just a lot of chemicals running through our bodies that we just don't have control over how we feel. Like if you ever had a crush on someone, you can't get them out of your head. It's because you're in lust stage, right? right? But Agape, that's a choice. So in hearing your question, my first reaction is, ooh, six months in, I wonder if there's a plateau. I wonder if he's not interested in choosing Agape love. So that's my first reaction. But then- you asked, is he cheating on me? Which is why my face contorted uh, <laughs> for those who can't see me. And it contorted because that is a very interesting question. I feel like when people ask, are they cheating on me? The seed has been planted and it's very hard to unplant the toxicity that is that question, which by the way, you might be completely valid in your feelings. And those initial questions where he asked, like, if is he taking a lot of showers or how about his phone or if he's moody, those are usually like the three biggest tall tail, tall, tall tail signs. Thank you. Of, uh, someone being someone doing something they should not, that they know they shouldn't be doing. I mean, listen, I think it's human nature for you to go there. Um, when you start to see a shift in pattern, especially since this isn't like you know, three dates in or five dates in, you're six months into this relationship. And I would consider this a long-term relationship. Um, you know, so I think it's human nature to start to start to think like, is he cheating on me? But I also think that, you know, especially in today's day and age, there's a lot of stress and anxiety related to, you know, feeling the pressure and the need to produce, whether it be at work or other parts of your life. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we have some off off months, if you will, you know, and I, maybe he's just having an off month. So I want to give him the benefit of the doubt um, because he is still seeing you consistently. You know, you said you see him like three or four times a week. That hasn't changed. Um, you know, you don't know what's happening at work. Maybe you could start asking him if things changed, up, changed at work um, and maybe be more. How do you have sex? Yeah. Um, so at the beginning, it was probably like, so if we're seeing each other four times a week, it was all of the times. <laughs> um yeah. And then recently it's been none, maybe like once every two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Louis, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, it's okay. I mean, I was just saying that you have like off, you know, off months. So, I mean, I think at this stage, you should know each other well enough to just have a come to Jesus. Like, I think you need to call a spade a spade and just say, listen, what's happening? This is clearly changing. There's a shift of some, something. Um, of course it's human nature for me to think like, is he cheating on me? Um, you know, maybe you should just address it with him. Um, you know, if you're invested in the relationship and you see a potential future with him, then I think it's worth your time to invest in figuring out what's happening rather than continue to like wonder, ponder or wonder, you yeah. know, you know, did I do something? Did, is he cheating on me? Is it, you know, because your mind's going to get the best of you. It does every time. So yeah. Yeah. So I think just more of a straightforward conversation is, is the way to go at this point. And if you think it's a relationship that's worth saving, even at six months therapy, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Couples therapy is, is something you can consider if you could, if you thought this was the guy you were going to marry. Right. Um, I'm a big fan of, of therapy. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Louie. Thanks, Maria. No, I will have that conversation tonight because he's coming over in about an hour. So oh, I am excited. God. Where and do you I'll live? Just, I live in Sydney. Holy, what time is it there? Um, it's 1.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> but it's tomorrow there. 
Yeah, oh, it was in the afternoon. Yeah. It's oh, nine thirty in New Jersey. The oh. Ask a Matchmaker <laughs> podcast is global. This is awesome. I, I love, love it. it. You know what? I do have a following in Australia. My mm-hmm. Australia girlies, man, I love them so much. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, thank you for your question. Yeah. Welcome to the Ask a Matchmaker Hotline. How can we help you? Hi, Maria. Hi, Louie. Thank you so much for taking my question, which is about expectations around emotional intimacy. So I've been dating my boyfriend for four months. He's previously been married and I am definitely someone who likes to talk about anything and everything, sure. good things, bad things in order to get to know someone. And I've found that when I ask seemingly innocuous questions that are within the context of what's going on. So for instance, a recent stay, there was a bachelor party next to us. And I was like, oh, you know, did you have a bachelor party? The tone immediately shifted, shuts down a bit and just clearly does not want to talk about his previous marriage and called it one of the most traumatic things that he's been to, been through. And I understand not wanting to talk about it initially, but kind of trying to gauge whether or not it's something that he'd feel comfortable opening up eventually about and he doesn't know whether or not he will and given that I have such I would say like high expectations around emotional intimacy and feeling like it's really important to get to know someone wanted to get both of your thoughts about the situation and whether or not that would be reasonable to kind of want to get more information and talk about those types of things. Before I give my opinion, I need some backup information. Yeah, of course. exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I'm wondering we're going to just do quick, is. quick questions. Give me those answers. Okay. Yeah. How old are you? 36. How old is he? 41. When did he get married? 2012. Okay. I don't know that math. Can you, so wait, he's, it's what did you say? He's 41. Years. Yeah. Okay. So he got married 31. at 31. Mm-hmm. How long was he dating her before they got married? That I do not know. Okay. And let's just pretend they dated for I think it was relatively fast into like a year. Even worse. All right. And then how long were they married for? Four years. And then do they have kids? No. So he has been divorced for six years. Yes. You are being unreasonable. (laughs) Okay. Um, and Louis well, might especially disagree four with months me. in. No, well, especially four, four months, months in. in. Yeah. So yeah, I don't I don't necessarily disagree. I want you to think about really quick who you dated six years ago. Do you have them in your head right now? Yes. What was their name? Uh, Juan. Okay, great. So Juan, I don't care if it's fake. I'm just giving you, I just want to visualize Vaughn for, for a second, okay? You dated Juan. Why'd you guys break up? He wasn't able to commit. Okay. So uh, let's pretend Juan had narcissistic tendencies or let's pretend Juan, uh, and I'm not saying his ex-wife did. I'm just giving you a traumatic scenario, okay? And now imagine that scenario following you for the rest of your dating life, even though you don't want to think about Juan anymore. Do you want to talk about Juan with him? Uh, I, I think I'm maybe an outlier in that, like I do just because it feels like it brings me closer to someone like, for instance, maybe not relevant to dating, but like I've experienced like sexual assault and trauma. And it's something that like, I feel like I need to talk about with my partners and able in order for them to like, know how to better relate to me or just like, it feels relevant, but I understand what you're saying that I think a lot of people aren't able or don't want to kind of face those things, especially early in a relationship or they're done facing them. Right. You don't like, I don't have any information about your current boyfriend. Okay. And also you've only been dating for four months, which by the way, is pretty pivotal. Okay. I think four months is the mark where things, where men start to make decisions about, okay, this is someone I'd like to keep dating and see if it's going to become serious or not. Okay. So I think you're at a precipice of something. Is that the right word, Louis? Precipice? I have no idea. I don't know. It's a good word. (laughs) All right. So with that said, um, the reason why I think you might be unreasonable is because he might have already dealt with it. 
And he doesn't want to have to keep bringing it up. Now he might bring it up with you on his own, uh, eight months in a year in, but it has to be his decision to want to deal with that kind of trauma. But also people get over things like, you know, I think about, uh, a relationship that I had 10 years ago, uh, excuse me, uh, 12 years ago in 2010. And that was very traumatic for me. Right. And I discussed it a lot amongst my friends that first year, but I did not want to talk about it with men that I dated, especially that early, uh, because it's like a lot. It's just like, I'm over it with him. Like, I don't want to have to keep bringing it up. The difference here is that I wasn't married to that person, right? That person was, and for, you know, if they didn't have kids, I don't know. I just feel like this is my own little monologue about like, some people have starter marriages and that's all they are. Louis, yeah, I'd so, love to hear yeah, your thoughts. I don't think that it's that early. I mean, I think four months is a pretty significant amount of time, especially somebody who's 36. What are your relationship goals? Like, what is your, what's your big picture goal? Marriage. Do, would you want to have children? Not biological. Okay. Oh, okay. So, well, okay. So that changes things a little bit with my opinion, just because if you want to have children, you don't want to spend time with someone who's going to, you know, take two more years of dating and then ultimately not want to commit, um, you know, or for you to see these patterns that you don't like, um, you know, to ultimately end a relationship. But if you're not looking to have biological children, then, you know, that maybe that's not as important, but I will, I will tell you that I believe he's giving you a snapshot into what a relationship with him is going to be like. And to me, it's a huge red, well, I don't like red flags, but you know, it's kind of a warning sign of like, let's keep your guard up um, ab about him and how he um, treats you within the relationship. Because I don't know, for me, I feel like there should be nothing. If you're going to spend, if you're going to be with somebody, especially long-term or think about marriage, there should be no secrets. You should be able to openly talk about everything, um, especially four months in. This is not like four dates in. This is four months in. So you've invested a lot of time with him. So I, I understand where you're coming from so much. Um, and and it, it could feel, you know, you might have fear like, should I be with him or is this heading in the right direction? Or can I be with someone who's not going to be as open-minded as I am? Because you sound like you're an open book. And when you're with someone who has a closed book and doesn't want to reopen a chapter in their book of life, that could potentially be that they're hiding something, or maybe they don't want to disclose something to you because you might judge them. So there could be that as well, but I don't know. There's, there's something's not right for me, you know, See, when but I hear what if they just have the like, to me, yeah. And I hear what you're saying, Louie, but to me also, it's like, they could also just have different personality types. But what's the big deal if she's like, Hey, did you have a bachelor party? I don't want to talk about that. Like, it's like, it's to me, it's so like immature in so many ways. Like, what, what, why, what's, what's the big deal? Did she like, ask her? If, that's like a really, did you, have you asked him about his bachelor party? Yeah, that's what she said. She asked him about his bachelor. Like, did you have a bachelor party? Oh, yeah, he shut you down it. on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I'm like, Oh, what? that's weird. Hold up. How, I missed that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, was this like so, a yeah. green card marriage? I'm kind of confused. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no. is he doing a woman a favor? Uh, could marriage out of convenience? Uh, I no, assume you've had the conversation right. about like what your relationship goals are. So I assume he said, yes, he wants to get remarried. Clearly you want to get married. So that happened, right? Yes. Oh, okay. So, I mean, That's yeah, positive. Four, I mean, this is four months in again. I keep going back to that because I don't know for, for a woman who's 36, four months is four months in is, it's kind of a big deal. I think. Um, totally. So and this I don't is know. my weekly thoughts? reminder. If you've been dating someone for more than four months and they're not <laughs> giving you the title, break up with them. Yeah. So what, what are your thoughts about what we said? I want to hear what you're thinking. Yeah. I think we hit something Right, which is to say that, and Maria, I think you were kind of suggesting this as well, that our approaches are also very different where like I am someone that values being able to talk about everything and everything. And I think that he might be a little bit more like processing on his own versus processing through communicating about it. And I think that's what I may be worried about as potential, like if this is an issue now, will this be a continued issue over the course of our relationship? In which case, like when you mentioned couples therapy, like that could be something that like, you know, not necessarily needed now, but something that I just keep an eye on in terms of like, 
if I'm someone that needs to discuss or has value in discussing these things and he's someone that doesn't, how do we kind of compromise in terms of like me kind of looking for those answers or kind of feeling closeness by being able to discuss those things, but then also respecting his boundaries. Yeah. And I feel like some people, some people think that couples therapy is when you have problems within a relationship, but couples therapy is a really healthy way to go. Just generally speaking, you know, you can learn each other's communication styles. You can learn how to approach different situations or maybe something that you're not happy about in a much more constructive manner. Um, so I don't know. I feel like everybody should have couples therapy before they get married just to understand each other better, not necessarily because there's problems, right? So this could be a really good example of that. Thank you both so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the Ask a Matchmaker hotline. How can we help you? So I've been back into like actively trying to date again for the last six months. And I recently met a guy and it's been about two and a half weeks that we've been talking. We went on according to the 12 date thing, we've about four dates in. Um, the first day was really good. We met, we hung out and talked for like four hours. And then we had a three hour phone conversation, another phone conversation somewhere. And then we hung out one night. Okay. Um, I laughed because I was telling my friend, <laughs> um, I was like, he's actually made comments to me about um, no pressure and like sex. He's like, we can wait a month, two months, whatever. Like, joking around about stuff and like not saying like outright like oh like oh we're gonna wait but it was like oh in, in January we're gonna fuck like to be able to put it out there but in a funny way so there was there's no pressure there um but I was laughing because I was telling my friend I was like I did give him a hand job and she's like Maria says she's like to that's normal these days <laughs> it's just like normalize it um so that was the last time we hung out And then the next day, like we talked for a little bit, but since that happened, it's been like lacking in conversation a little bit. Um, But his daughter is now in town, obviously for the holidays. So I expect him to be busy. Sure. Um, But he's just like, the communication isn't what it was before. And I just don't know if it's because his daughter's there now or, um, or if it's something else. And like, I don't know if I'm reading too much into it. Cause I'm so used to like negative history that I'm looking for a red flag when there's really not one. Cause it's so new. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know what you would think about that. If I'm looking for something it's self-sabotaging or, um, yeah, but like he, like he messaged me the other day and was like, Oh, I miss your face. <laughs> and, um, was like this post cute. hand job? Yes. Our oh. pre- yes. Post hand okay. job. <laughs> um but Louis' face is awesome <laughs> dying right <laughs> so, now <sighs> like he's the one like he hasn't pressured any sex or anything he's talked about like waiting and then like he'll he messaged me and he's like oh i miss you but then he doesn't like follow up the conversation there's like lulls in it and i'm like i don't know if that's just because he's busy with his daughter but how hard the text or am i looking too much into this looking for something negative because it's been so like quick like yeah, it could be a little bit of everything. Yeah, it could be a little bit of everything, right? Um, so so help me understand. So you you started dating again like six over the past six months. Um, why did you stop dating? I every time I would try um to like go back into the field of like dating, it was just let down after let down, and I was just like, I don't mm-hmm. have time for this. And um, I've been a single mom, so I've just been like working, hanging out with my friends at home. Um, but I've gotten to the point where like, I was just like, all right, I'm done being single. Let me try this. And I've been on the apps, I hate them, but I'm like, you know what, I'm going to stick it out because I'm tired of being single. And so that's where I've just in the last six months actually been trying. If she called you right now for a dating assessment, how would you guide her in what she just said about why she stopped dating? You know, I think I would really dive into your past. I think that's my first direction that I would go into just to see um, your, your pattern, your dating pattern. Um, When it comes to like, like, have you ever had a relationship or have you only dated? I mean, I know you have a daughter, I think you said. So I assume you've been in relationships in your past. Um, I would say they've been situationships. (laughs) Um, Anytime I've like, you know, I always like someone and then it's um, last time I talked to somebody it was like a couple of months and it was never 
labeled and like we worked together so we didn't like put it out there and then all of a sudden he was just like I can't do this it's too much and then that was it and then kind of just I don't know killed it and then I would just go back to where I'm like I don't I don't do this because I just I just get hurt every time so then I don't put myself out there because it's like um I I know I'm not but it like me like I'm not lovable I'm not good enough like nobody like I, I never get the relationship part of it Mm-hmm. so that's why I said I'm so, like I don't know if I'm just looking for negatives when there isn't any or what <laughs> so yeah part of the dating assessment is to like figure out like what's been happening or not happening with the way that you date and it sounds like you um have a lot going on in your head uh that that is kind of driving you know the outcome of these relationships I mean you clearly went into a situation ship knowing it was a situation ship um but this time is a little different right because you you're you met and you've gone on four dates. Um, have you talked to him about the type of relationship that he's looking for? Was that something that was like in his dating profile or was that something that, that you've discussed with him? Like I'm looking for something more serious. Uh, we have discussed it. Um, he did tell me like it was, um, I think after that first date we we're on the phone and he was saying how he originally was just on there to look for somebody to hook up with. And that was kind of what it was going to be. Um, but then he met me and he knew that I wasn't that kind of person and he didn't want it to be that way. And he's like, I actually think you're really cool. (laughs) It sounds like you don't really have any expectations at this point, four dates in. So my advice to you would probably be to just try to keep the momentum moving forward in that direction. Um, and, and stop thinking about like, what is, what is the label behind what's happening or what is the direction that we're going in? Um, if you see yourself with him, right? So a a lot of these feelings that you're feeling are happening probably because of your past situations. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you could potentially be like self-manifesting the outcome of these relationships out of fear and out of not being willing to be vulnerable through these, through this process. And unfortunately, no matter which way you look at it, you have to be vulnerable through the dating process. If you're ever going to turn dating into a relationship or into a marriage, right? Mm -hmm. So but the risk with doing that is that you're opening yourself up to getting hurt. And that's always going to be the scary part. But if you go into it with the full mindset of knowing this information, then I think you can kind of prepare yourself better for, you know, potentially getting hurt at the end. Right. So like, but at least you're giving yourself a fair shot at, at meeting somebody great. Um, do you see yourself with this guy long-term? I know you've only gone on four dates with him, but, but the little that you know about him, the time that you spent with him, can you see yourself with him? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, then I think it's worth the investment for sure. And I think maybe just look at it like, okay, the next three dates, you know, following Maria's 12 date rule, I'm just going to have fun. I'm going to have zero expectations. You know, let's just keep going and um, see where this goes without feeling like, what is this going to be? Right. So your fear of mm-hmm. the outcome, you should kind of release um, and just really focus on the positive side of this. So, yeah, right now I would give them the benefit of the doubt. It's a holiday week. He has a daughter. You have a daughter or he has a son or a daughter. He has a daughter. I have a son. Okay. Okay. So he has a, he has a daughter. You have a son. So like you guys are busy. You have family stuff happening. You don't know what's going on with work, with, with you know, working during Thanksgiving. I don't know mm-hmm. if his ex is in the picture. Sometimes that can be, you know, especially during the holidays, the ex can come back into the picture and that can like resurface a lot of issues or maybe cause a lot of chaos. Um, and maybe four dates in, he's not really ready to talk to you about that stuff either. So that's the other <laughs> side of this is we don't really know what he's thinking or what he's doing. Um, or you, you can just ask have, him. Do you have on the calendar when you're going to see each other again? We don't, no. Have that's a you... good point, Maria. Because when you ha- when you both have kids, a calendar of dating is really, really smart. Right. How about, um, have you, so it's the, you know, we're recording this on the eve of Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> There are thousands of people making awful mistakes in their hometowns tonight. Uh, (laughs) Shout out to them. Uh, I want to ask you, what has your communication been like today? Um, I actually, as we're on this right now, he just answered me from a message from earlier today. Um, Okay. So, I mean, he does communicate. It's just not what it was. He was just asking me what... I was down in the town by him and he just asked what I was doing. He asked what I'm doing for Thanksgiving, commented on a picture I had posted. 
Okay, wait, Sounds, hold yeah, up. Great. Yeah. Hold up. No, no, no. <laughs> We're going to walk you through how you're going to respond now. Okay. Because any yeah. guy asking you what you're doing, they're hoping you tee up. I think, Louie, you'll have to tell me, but I think it's also like teeing up like, uh, I'm actually free on Saturday. Do you want to meet up for this? Or right. I'm having, I'm, you know, again, this is where there's a gender divide a bit for, for a lot of families and households, especially when you've got yeah. different parents and children shuffling through. Mm-hmm. So like Louis said, we have to give people the benefit of the doubt this week. So let's talk about what did you text him? What did he text you back? I want you to read it to us. <laughs> uh, let me see. And by the way, I just want to say this. If he's not interested, he's not responding to your text. Yeah. Yeah. Especially. So on let's, the just, eve of let's just be clear. He's clearly <laughs> interested. Yeah. Um, so he had asked me earlier uh, what I was doing. I said I was hanging out with my friend who's in town. Are you working? And he said he just got off work, was going to pick up his daughter from his mom's. And then I said, oh, I was in that same area. And I was like, are you having a good time with her? Well, she's here. Um, and then he just asked what, what I was doing in that area. He said, yeah, she's a ball of energy. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? Okay. So have you already responded? No. Okay. Because you're really just talking to us. <laughs> Great. <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, this is okay. as good as it gets. It's like real time, <laughs> I, you know, responding to texts. Listen, you've given him a hand job. He's come back. <laughs> I'm going to pull out the flirt card, right? Like we got to stop this. You're not someone's secretary asking them, how are the kids? Like who gives a shit? Uh, so instead, I think you should say, you know, I'm, I'm actually, you know, what you could say is like, what am I doing this weekend? Uh, so how would I respond to this? Uh, Louis, do you think too? Cause I want to see if we come to a consensus. Um, I would say, um, you know, <laughs> cooking the, tur- are you cooking a turkey? Or are you going to someone's house? <laughs> No, I'm going to be at my, my mom's. Oh, okay. So I'm heading to my mom's tomorrow. Uh, and uh, I, are you free at all in the next four days? Okay. Are Me? you? No, yes. I'm asking She's you asking so, I can, so I can yeah. like um, tell you what to text him. Yeah, I am. Yeah. What day are you free? Um, pretty much every day until Sunday. I work Sunday. <laughs> okay. So I would say... I'm heading to my mom's tomorrow, uh, but uh, I've been thinking about you today and I'd love to see you if you're free on Saturday or Sunday. That's it. Okay. Like be vulnerable, put it out there. And- <laughs> Absolutely. I agree with you hundred percent. See, I just, the right. only reason I haven't put any intent into asking him is because I know his daughter's in town. So I know. Okay. Let me. him, let him say no. In the sense that he'll say, I actually can't do Saturday and Sunday, but how about Monday? Gotcha. I think sometimes we get so pre- so caught up in like, what should I say? Or, you know, r- versus like, say what you're thinking. Like, if you want to see him, you know, I'm thinking about you. Well, yeah. I, you mm-hmm. know, ho- I would like, totally what are you doing this weekend? That. Hopefully seeing you. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm just more direct that way, but I'm a guy. So like, <laughs> like that's, that. how, that's, no, but that's perfect because you're literally telling us what guys want to hear. Right. So yeah. with that said, I need you, dear listener, to <laughs> talk like a guy. Right. So here's I want I, I need your phone out and I want you to type in. You're going to send it right now. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Oh so God. you're going to say I'm going to my mom's tomorrow, period. I've actually been thinking about you all day today and I would love to see you if you're free this weekend. Hands down. What? Hands down. Hands down. What do you mean? That was, that was my hand job joke. Oh, don't put the hand. (laughs) Don't put a hand emoji. No, no, no. Just, just put that. Louis, do you, do you think that's acceptable? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So send it. Did you send it? minute okay did you send it yeah oh he take he takes a while to respond though so that's okay (laughs) we're gonna take the next question and you're gonna you know circle back and tell us if when he responds in the next 10 minutes because no man take but did he take a while to respond (laughs) what does that mean during the hand job oh (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I, I it's Thanksgiving week. Maybe that's what it, I'm just a little crazy today. I don't know. What's You're just oh, hungry. I love it. You're hungry, Louie. That's all it is. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. I digress. Um, I'm sorry. You know what's funny? Speaking of Thanksgiving, um, so my husband makes the most incredible stuffing. I can't. And last year he, he made a lot, right? And we, I don't know about you, but my husband, he is like obsessed with his vacuum sealer. I got it for Valentine's day in 2020. Uh, that's what I gifted my husband for Valentine's. I got him a sous vide plus a vacuum yeah. sealer. Okay. okay. So he vacuum sealed all the leftover. Um, I mean, he made a lot. Okay. So all the leftover stuffing And this morning, he's like, should I but the leftover stuffing from last year, like this year, and I'm like, no, make fresh. And then we'll just have that. We totally forgot about it. It's in, it's just stacked right. in our freezer all year. Ugh. anyway. All right. Let's take the next question while we wait for a uh, hand job, Joe, to get back to us. Oh, yeah. uh, welcome to the ask a matchmaker hotline. How can we help you? I'm sorry. Can I start off saying I'm a nurse and there is no reason that I have to use Zoom. So this is like the first time. Oh, oh wow. well, I am so happy to be the one to pop your Zoom cherry. Oh, oh my yes. God. Especially on the week. Did you know that Zoom shares have gone down this week because less people are using Zoom because people are going back to the office? Oh. But no, not our nurse. Here she is. She started a Zoom just to log into this call. I want someone to call the stock market and let them know Zoom is coming back. All right. Um, also, I just want to say that Louie looks like he's in his early 30s. Yeah, he's wow. A I love you, Stephanie. You're my new favorite no, person. Like, I thought you were a liar. Um, no, I'm 50. I turned 50. I swear to God. It's um, Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I don't believe you. Really. Okay. We'll go okay. with that. 1972. Um, yeah. November 15th. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Okay. I can't, I can't believe it either. I'm yeah. Anyway. That's wild. Accept the compliment, Louie. Just I, like, thank you. Yeah. I did. I said, thank you. thank you. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I learned how to do that 10 years ago. I might, yeah. I might have to get Botox. I don't never you have You don't Botox need either. Botox. No. Are you kidding me right now? You look like a baby. Okay. It's like a long question. I'm going to start out with saying that I am black. The guy that I'm talking to is, or not talking, you know, um, he's white. I recently found out that he votes Republican. Um, yeah, like, I know that Maria has said about like interpolitical dating and do their values align, blah, 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 blah. Um, I don't give a fuck about his values it's only sex but oh also he does he thinks the same way that I do about social issues but he votes republican for tax breaks and whatever but how much is he making I don't ask that oh well okay what does he do for a living he's in the corporate America he's like the vice president of I don't know some shit of um, some <laughs> shit okay I can't look that up on Glassdoor so no. did you see it okay I opened it up he is making oh four hundred and twenty thousand dollars per what the year fuck? so here's what you should know about this um I just want to say that when people say like, I vote Republican for the taxes, I always ask like, well, how much are you making? Because your tax rate is in brackets, right? So he is right. getting a certain tax rate up to $400,000. And then for the remainder, that $21,000, $21,851, he has a different tax rate. So mm -hmm. um, he's basically voting a certain way if it's really just for taxes um, to save like, I don't know, $1,500, uh, which is very interesting that that's what his values are worth. What kind of nurse are you? I work in the operating room. Oh, wow. oh God. You're like a that's surgical insane. nurse. Yeah. So you're like making like what? 120, 150? Um, kind of. Okay. Well, Good just you. because I'm a travel nurse. So <gasps> you're a travel I nurse. Like that's more. where all the money is. Yeah, I know. I take home $4,000 a week. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. Get it. Get it. All right. So black woman dating. Are you like African-American or are you yeah. Caribbean? American? Like what's just, the no, just African black American. with a capital yeah. B got it. And then yeah. this white guy, what kind of white are we talking about? I don't know. 
ugh, the fact that you don't know tells me everything I need to know. Okay. So, uh, Wait, so we're how long about- have you been seeing him? We have known each other for 20 years and it's like off and on that we'll but, visit each other like every, I don't know, year, but. So wait, what, what, wait, is, your, what, is, the, what is the core question here? Like, okay. is it, should you date a Republican or is it like, should I no, be in a relationship no, with somebody no, no. that you've had an on and off again relationship with for 20 years? It's about like the guilt that I have about dating him. Um, even Are you the- dating or are you fucking? fucking that's the thing oh girl like, i feel no guilty such guilt about with having with a me. republican dick enter me you know what you know what keep that republican dick i'm telling you friends with I benefits agree. there has to be something that just like as off your values where you're like i could never date you therefore i'll never fall in love he is the safest friends with benefits you will ever have louis i don't know do you agree do you disagree yeah, I mean, I don't. You don't see a future with him. I mean, it's been twenty Absolutely years. Absolutely of... not. I can't. <laughs> yeah, I can't even fathom the guilt. Someone who doesn't care about people outside. Is the sex the good? Oh, oh well, you just God. said that doesn't care about people. So now that's different. So a lot of people are are Republican because they're fiscally conservative, but is he socially conservative as well? So that's different no, for me. But he's like, it. It's not a sociopath, right? Like. <sighs> People who don't give a fuck about other people outside of their bubble. I mean, but I'm in the bubble and he's lovely to me. Love luck to my producer editing this episode this is so that t- I yeah. don't get canceled. Oh God, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It's okay. I don't want to make generalizations because <laughs> like some of my clients are Republicans. And But why uh, now? But why now? Like you, yeah. 20 years of on and off again. Like you've had 20 no, years of Republican so dick in you anyway. So thing. why now? Did he like fuck you harder when Obama was president? <laughs> Shut up. No, no. But <laughs> oh the thing God. now, it like I always had an inkling. So I never brought it up like 20 years. Okay. And here's, here's the real question here. What is happening right Does now? Does he eat you out? Oh my God. <laughs> Dude, that- he fucking loves it. Oh, then what is what is the debate here? Um, Should I feel bad? Like I'm hiding him from my he's, friends. He's pleasure. Twenty years for twenty Why now? years. I don't understand what's happening right now. No, because I've just now heard him say, like, say who he is. Like, I don't you know what? I anybody. would roast him for the twenty one thousand dollar tax bracket that he thinks he is being overtaxed on uh that's what i would yeah. do i would roast i'm going to t- i'm going to tell you what everybody is I thinking do. listening to this right now it doesn't matter he is not a long-term ap- option for you you know you've been this on and off again thing you know for 20 years and none of this matters like i think it's good sex you're having a good time i think that's all that matters She's i think coming. you're reading way too much into this yeah so, like if you yeah. weren't if you weren't orgasming then yeah dude like, oh my god oh my god um so are you saying i can visit him next month i go sit on his face you have my blessing oh my god okay <laughs> i yeah. shouldn't feel guilty just I'm wear a condom and then it won't really be a friend. republican in you ew <laughs> wait i hope you guys are staying safe Yes. Oh, yes. okay. Uh, because right. he has a rotation and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh. Uh, no, he's not a re- relationship guy. And because I've been following you, I do believe everything men say. Like if they say they're not into relationships, I yeah. not that I want one with him because... Mm-hmm. He's like morally bankrupt. Um, no, but it does help <laughs> listening to you, like believing what but, they say. Thank my you. mom would not thank be you listening, for listening to, this to Ask a Matchmaker. And, uh, you know, good luck to our producer editing this question. Oh my God. I love it. So it's perfect. Sorry. Um, no, don't on. apologize. So, it's awesome. Also, can I say that I think you have the best husband in the world? Oh, thank you. Oh, I, I, I think so too. He's yeah. my dream. George is awesome. 
Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. I, I really thank love him. You. I don't even have to do oh, shit for Thanksgiving. Sorry. I should have to take care of the kids. He's cooking everything. It's great. Oh, I can't believe, oh. can't believe the lottery. Can I just tell you, I, I went to dinner at their house once and it was like the best Greek meal I've ever oh, eaten. My like, I actually God. went to Greece this past summer for three weeks and it doesn't even compare to George's dinner. Thank you I'd so much to, for calling in. I'd love to go in. have drinks with you. Thank you guys. No problem. Okay. Let's go back to that previous caller. Ask a matchmaker hotline. Do we have an update? We do. What? <laughs> How quickly did he um, text you back? Hold on. Yeah, I mean, this is a quick text. I need back. to know. It was. It was very quick. I don't have a time frame, but it was pretty quick. A couple minutes. Okay. A couple minutes <laughs> in. What did he say? He said that he can't Saturday. Because I was like, I just said when I can, I'd like to see you this weekend. Okay. Um. And basically he said Saturday, Sunday, he can't, he's free Monday. He's like, I want to see you too with a sad face. I, he oh, sad face. That see, way. that's good. That is yeah. so good. Okay. So wait, so he responded, can't do this weekend. I can do Monday. Is that what he said? Yeah. Okay. He said he's free Monday. Yeah. Great. So have you responded? I did. I told him that I get off early on Monday Oh, perfect. and then we'll see. We'll see what you wrote. We'll no. see. No, no, I mean, no, 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 no. I mean, we'll see. He hasn't read, hasn't spotted. Yet. Okay. No, no, no. You're going to respond. You're going to double text. You, you <laughs> sent that text without extra information. <laughs> I think you need to have like a dopamine date, like a get to know him date. So do you have like an ax throwing place near you? We do. Great. So uh, that's what you're going to write. Uh, what do you think, Louie, before I keep going? Yeah, no, set up the date. Okay. Sure. So I think you need to text him right now. I propose we go axe throwing after work. I don't know about the axe throwing. Oh, what do you want to say? <laughs> what do you think I should say? I'm like, I would be terrified if my the woman that I'm texting with is like, let's go axe throw. <laughs> okay, so I need I need her to queue up the date here, right? So uh I yeah, propose Monday. Yeah, Monday sounds okay. great. I'm off work at blank. Well, time. she already said Monday after work. So now it's the, what was it? What did you write back? Um, I said I work Monday, but I get off early. What does early mean? Yeah, see, I don't know. What that means. I mean, so I, vague. Time. I, I know I get off at two that day. I usually get, okay. get off until five. Yeah. So. All right. So I would respond so, back. I, I just checked. I'm off at 2 p.m. Perfect. Let so write that down. What time. I just Let checked. Me, period. I get off okay. at 2 p.m. period. Um, mm -hmm. What were you going to, Louie, I want to be yeah. more definitive. I want to say, how yeah. about we meet for cocktails? Do you drink? Does he drink? Yeah. Okay. Is there like, like a that. sexy cocktail bar where you can wear like a sexy dress with your shoulders out? Not really. You don't but have I do any? have a green top that has my shoulders out. That would be nice. Perfect. <laughs> That's fine. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, let's meet at XYZ cocktail place. Give me a name, put it in there. Do you have a place mm -hmm. in mind? No, not off the bat yet. I need you to text them right now. So I don't want okay. you to wait more than 20 minutes. So let's meet at, give me a place. Come on. You got it. What's your favorite place? Grouper. There you go. Put that in. Um, okay. How does 6 p.m. sound? Okay. Question mark. Send it. <laughs> and he's going to reply. Sounds great. And then when you're going to go there, you're going to have apps. You're going to have you're gonna have drinks. Get to know each other. I'm really excited for you. And then tomorrow, he's going to text you, Happy Thanksgiving. Louis, we have solved the world's problems today. <laughs> <laughs> Hands down, we have. Thank you again for calling in. All right. So. That's it for today's Ask a Matchmaker. If you'd like to book a dating assessment with Louie or even a dating strategy call, like let's figure out what we can change in the next three months, right? Uh, book it. I'm going to have a link in the show notes and you can choose dating assessment, dating strategy call. One is 15 minutes long. One is an hour long. Although I'll be honest, Louie always goes over. Yeah. Uh, and then from there, we'll figure out what works best. And hopefully the dating journey will shift a little bit in your favor. Am I right, Louie? Absolutely. And 
again, these calls are really meant to help you and genuinely want to steer you in the right direction and maybe help you shift the energy uh, into a different into a different direction. So, absolutely, Louis. Uh, I know this is being pre-recorded and it's going to be after Thanksgiving, but I'm wishing you and your family a very happy Thanksgiving. Well, oh, thank you. And I hope for anyone listening in the future, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Some of you might need to run and go get some plan B. I get it. No judgment. <laughs> totally fine. Some of you uh, caught feelings with someone you shouldn't have. Uh, I say that usually takes about three to four months to get over. It's okay. Uh, and uh, some of you need to book a dating strategy or dating assessment call. And that link is in the show notes. Go follow Louie on Instagram at Louis Felix. Is it Louis Felix? Yeah, it's just my name. There you go. And you can, of course, follow me on Instagram at Matchmaker Maria. And uh, that is all for today's show. Again, Louie, thank you so much for joining me on Ask a Matchmaker. It's always a blast. And this one was, <laughs> was even better. It was awesome. Be lovable, but more importantly, be likable. See you next week. Mm-hmm.